Hi everyone, and welcome back to How Do I Comic Book. We are in Lesson 2. Scripts are important. Now, here are some examples of alternative to the formal script. Um, I use a lot of outlines in my work, and this allows me to use all the brainstorming ideas I accumulated and allow them to be put in chronological order. And that way I can see what could be added and what could be taken out, what kind of dialogue in, uh, I can use in this situation. And I will put that, I will include that in the outlines as I go. Uh, another method I use, I used um, for my comics uh, was roadmaps. And roadmaps are very similar to the bubble idea, but this allows you to kind of keep a more focused to the storyline and if you come across two possible um, situations that you want to play out this allows you to split off the two ideas and play through them and play them out as you go through and if you end up running into a roadblock and your story can't progress you can always move to the next idea and see how that progresses and if it allows you to move on then that's the pro um, that's the best method to go through and it really helped um, with a lot of projects so I definitely recommend this idea if when you have a more formal idea and now the formal uh, the formal format is very similar to a movie script as I have seen um, as we see here on the left this is an excerpt from Josh Flanagan it's Boston and on the right is a script from uh, Pulp Fiction the movie and as you can see um, the comic strip will have designated panels, so they'll have all the panels numbered, and a description of what is happening in that panel. And if there is some description next to it, then they'll be included in that panel. And as uh, and it will move on from the next panel to the next panel. And as you can see from the Pulp Fiction uh, script here, uh, the descriptions are very to the point and. They describe wh what, um, what do we call it, uh, describe what they're actually doing. It doesn't really go into much detail about how they feel internally. As for the com comics page right here on panel three, Webster is confused, but slightly annoyed with the situation. He's got no patience for these sub subtleties. And that allows you to get inside the, um, that allows the artist to get inside the emotional um, stage of the character, even more so stand, uh, um, mindset of this character, and that way the artist is able to kind of convey the expressions of the character in that situation. While in a movie, you have to um, kind of retell the story as it's happening. So. Uh, they're both kind of told um, definitely the movie script is told from third person and present tense and the comic strip it has it's told from a third person as well however it does allow um, it's not stricted to present uh, present tense as well uh, strictly to present tense but they are trying to tell the story as it's happening as it would be in movie scripts and for comic strips it basically describes the story as it's unfolding, as, as it's happening. Now the format, this is, uh, I think this is um, a very uh, cleaner formatting of, uh, of comics. And this is a um, industry format as well. So might as well learn how to do the in industry format if you decide to take comics seriously in, the, in, your, uh, in your future. So with each new page, they do set the scene, the setting, and then the next panel would describe the um, the scene as well, what's happening inside each panel. And of course, there's the character with dialogue, if there is any. And when it comes to your scripts, um, and this is only going to be a short one, I'd like to um, caution of using dialogue because dialogue does take a lot of room when you're drawing and dialogue should be seen as like the icing on the cake. So I do suggest um, using dialogue sparingly and telling the story through images. 
and a great um, I do have this great um, uh, program called Celtics it's free and it's a script writing program now it's not limited to just movie scripts you can write screenplays um, audiobooks comic books and many and novels as well so it does what's nice about this um, program is that it does the formatting for you and when you are and you want to save this as a PDF um, file it'll show the, it'll show it in the PDF setting I'll actually show you what it looks like and honestly I haven't seen this before when I was um, starting out but it keeps things in order and it looks a lot cleaner so definitely give it a try. It is free. And there are also um, more uh, premium uh, programs of Celtics if you want to use that. But it has just about every um, attribute that the premium would have. So definitely you check this out and kind of play with it. Now, um, comic strips are all about visuals. Definitely all about imagery. And when you're describing each panel, you have to convey what um, what's visually happening. Are they uh, what's going on? Uh, like, is they having di are they having dinner? Um, what's the tension like? Kind of um, kind of give uh, try to get the mood across your imagery, and as long as the idea comes across, that that it's a successful visual imagery. And like I said earlier, um, use dialogue sparingly. Uh, actions do speak louder than words sometimes, and it allows um, the reader to appreciate the artwork, uh, which is, I think, is important. And less is more. Less dialogue is more to more impact to the um, to the story, I believe. But um, definitely use as sparingly as possible with this project. And you are free to do it, um, you're free to put as much dialogue into your personal work outside of class. So don't feel like you're obligated to, um, to not use dialogue ever. This is just for an exercise to kind of make you think visually and try to convey what you want to say on a page through images. That's the core of this, um, of making scripts for comic books. Now there are different types of writers. Um, one type is called an architect, architect, sorry, and these people like to plan everything out. Every single detail is in place. Um, uh, every aspect of the characters, the history, and the um, plot and scheme of the story is all planned out. What's the uh, one of the benefits of this? Um, this method is that you're likely to get sidetracked and to get lost and you are rarely stuck on an idea because you confirmed your you've confirmed through your planning that yes this will be definitely going to happen and this and this and this will happen so it's very like very less likely to be stuck however the cons of having a um, architect uh, mentality is that you leave very little uh, uh, very little room to grow and you might end up getting kind of bored with this original idea and you want to change it but then that would have that would kind of force you to look back and rethink and second guess everything and then sometimes you know if you do use the same a uh, formula it can it does tend to get a little bit uh, bit predictable the second time uh, the second kind is the gardener and the pros with this um, with this type of writer is that you allow your ideas to evolve with the work. It progresses and it grows as you um, uh, as you move on, and it leaves room for surprises and alternative ideas to play out, and even ideas you never gave thought to. However, the cons to this is that you do have the tendency of getting lost and stuck, and absolutely, absolutely um, prone to second guessing your original idea, and then you're kind of left felt. Uh, you're left feeling a little unsatisfied with the end result. However, regardless of your choice or kind of type of writer you are, choose a path that works for you. And if you decide to mold the two together and it works out, that's great. But definitely work something out that works for you. And 
the better it works for you, the better you'll be able to progress. Now, finally, the main project we've come to. The objective of the main project is to take all the knowledge you've learned from the previous lessons and develop them into a short um, comic uh, with the following prop I've selected. It'll be four pages maximum and the color is optional. I know not everybody is comfortable with color and um, some people are, but definitely you're, you're able to color if you want to, but it's not an obligation. Now the prompt is the story is about a monk who has a mysterious admirer who's an ambassador. It starts in a magical part of our universe. The story begins with a lie, climaxes with someone revealing their feelings, and ends with the war. And I do want this prompt, I do want this comic to have a beginning, middle, and end. So try to divide, try to stick closely with this prompt as possible. You may tweak a little things. Like maybe it's not a magical part, maybe it's like more of a sci-fi part. That that's fine, but try to keep to the uh, main plot of the story. It begins with a lie. Um, someone reveals their feelings, and it ends up with a war, beginning of the war or in the midst of war, however you choose. Sorry about that. Now. I know this is a lot of information to take, out, take hold right now, then feel free to go back to the um, beginning of this video and listen over. And if you have any further questions, do email me or uh, leave messages in the form and I will come back to them. So we will, uh, I, in the next lesson, I will go ahead and go with the, explain the layout of panels and how to plan for all that. So. As you are working with your story until the next lesson is uh, posted, definitely allow your ideas, brainstorm, um, and get a clear idea of what will happen in the story first before you put any dialogue. And of course, last and most importantly, write without fear and edit without mercy. Don't fear to write. Definitely just jot down all your ideas that comes out. And then you can go back and then edit as you please because that is definitely what writing is all about and until then i will see you in the next lesson good luck guys <laughs>